Hey everyone, so in this video, we are going to talk about two of the four imperfect intervals. And they're going to be the simplest two, seconds and thirds. So the main difference between imperfect and perfect category intervals is the qualities that they can have. So perfect intervals can either be perfect or augmented or diminished. However, imperfect intervals have two other possible qualities and they cannot ever be marked perfect. So they can be major, they can be minor, and then like perfect intervals, they can either be augmented or diminished as well. It is imperative that you always find the size of the interval before attempting to find its quality. Uh, let me show you an example why we always find size first, now that you've probably had a little experience with perfect intervals. So when we have perfect intervals from, say, a C to an F sharp or G flat, notice that the number of half steps here are one, two, three, four, five, six. So for a fourth, six half steps makes an augmented fourth. But for a fifth, six half steps makes for a diminished fifth. So depending on the size, depending on what notes you are seeing on the staff, so you might see this, or you might see this, and the sound is the same. But this must be treated as a fourth, and this must be treated as a fifth, because that's the size, right? Line, space, line, space, that makes it a fourth. Line, space, line, space, line makes it a fifth. Even though they sound the same, this must be called a fourth, this must be called a fifth. Because there's some overlap there, we must always figure out the size first. So figure out the size, then you can decide what you're allowed to label the quality. So super important, please don't forget. Okay, seconds and thirds are actually really easy. And seconds are what we're going to start with. And they're mostly easy because you've likely been doing them. If you've made a major or a minor scale, you've been making intervals of a second. There we go. So this, as you can see, looks like a two note scale, right? One space to the next line up or one letter to the next letter up is a second. So anytime you do this, you're dealing with whole steps and half steps when you build scales. So you've been dealing with seconds the whole time. We just need to change the way we label things. So a half step gets relabeled to minor second. A whole step gets relabeled to major second. And then the other two are also just another half step away. So we have our chart here. So if you get an enharmonic pair of notes, so for instance, A sharp and B flat, let me do that here. A and B are there. A sharp and B flat occupy the same key but they're written differently, right? They would be written as two different letters, A sharp and B flat. And therefore those would be no spaces apart. And as such, we would label them as a diminished second. Again, a half step is minor, a whole step is major. And then when we get to augmented, that's that whole plus a half step that we sometimes see, right? Like in the harmonic minor scale. So in harmonic minor scales, often you end up between six and seven, with three half steps. So when that happens, you're actually ending up with what's called an augmented second, so three half steps. So for instance, A flat to B would be an augmented second, A flatted, and then here's B, one, two, three half steps, makes an augmented second. And thirds, you can just still just kind of count up your whole steps and half steps. A major third is two whole steps, or four half steps, depending on how you want to count it. Augmented will be one more, minor will be one less from four, and diminished will be two less from four. Again, just like with perfect intervals, you most likely just want to memorize one quality. I like major as my main quality to memorize, so I know a major second is two half steps, and a major third is four. Then you just need to remember, how do I get to any other quality from there? Well, minor is always minus one half step, and diminished is always minus two. And then from major to augmented, it is always just one larger. And that's pretty much it for that. Let's look at some examples. So first example. Okay, first thing first, right? Always do size first. This must be called a second. 
So we've got some kind of second here, and it's c to d. So let's have a look. There's c to d. How many half steps or whole steps? So that is one whole step or two half steps. Therefore, it is a major second. A major second is a whole step, right? And let's just see that here. So major second, whole step, or two half steps, however you want to think about it. OK, here's a third. Thirds, it's kind of nice when you see any odd interval, they will always go space to space or line to line. So you can always tell really quickly the difference between an even interval like a second and an odd interval like a third. So it's a really quick check. So make sure if you're seeing space to space or line to line for any interval, the size should always be an odd number. And if you're ever seeing line to space or space to line, the size will always be a even number. OK, so here's our third. And we have an A to a C sharp. So let's have a look over here, A to C sharp. How many half steps? One, two, three, four half steps. Well, it's two half steps for a major second. It's four half steps for a major third. So we have a major third here. One, two, three, four. Next one. OK, another third. And again, you can tell really quickly because it's space to space and we're only doing seconds and thirds right now. So one kind of trick you can do is if both notes have, have the exact same accidental, they're moving together. The distance between the two notes is not changing at all because they've both gone down the ladder one step, right? The distance between them, the number of spaces, the number of keys between them hasn't changed at all. So. One thing you can do is when you have the same accidental on both notes, you can just ignore the accidentals. So you can either solve this as A to C or A flat to C flat, and you're going to get exactly the same answer because they've moved together one place down, one flat, right? So let's do it the long way first. Let's go A flat to C flat, which is harder to think than A to C, but we'll do it. So here we go. One, two, three half steps. OK, well, we know that four half steps makes major, and we got three. That's one smaller, so it must have gone to minor. So this must be a minor third. Now let's check it where we cancel out the two flats. So that would just be thinking of them as A to C. We still get the same number of half steps. One, two. Three, and it's much easier to think white keys like that than it is to deal with these uh, accidentals. So one, two, three, still a minor third. Cool, let's do another one. Number four, back to seconds. So we have B to C. That is a half step. Half step is a minor second. That's how we label that one. And it's because we only have one half step in there. Let's see, number five, ah, back to thirds. OK, we can't cancel anything out here because we know the flat is changing the distance between the F and the A because they both aren't moving together. So F flat and A, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five half steps. So maybe we don't have it memorized yet, so I'm going to go back and look. And here we go, a third for major would be four, and we got five, one larger. So must be an augmented third. There we go. All right, number six. OK, A sharp to B flat. Let's see what we get. So it's got to be a second. And here is A sharp, and here is B flat. Oh, they're on the same key. That's no steps between them, right? Those are enharmonic. So this must be a diminished second. No steps. OK, another third. OK, E to G flat. So let's check it. Here's E to G, and then I lower the G to flat. And we have one, two half steps. So let's double check, just in case we don't remember. Four makes major, and we have two. That's two smaller than four, which makes it diminished. Was that the one? That one. And there we go, diminished third. So two half steps. So this might cause you problems if you're only looking at the piano keyboard and seeing where they are, because you might be inclined to call this a second. It is not a second because it's written as a third. There is overlap between the sounds. 
but the labeling is totally consistent. If this is written as a third, you must call it a diminished third. You cannot call it a major second. So just be really, really specific about your size. Don't forget it as you go over to the piano and see, oh wait, that looks like a second. Well, it's not a second, or at least we're not allowed to call it that because it's been written otherwise. All right. And last one, B flat, C sharp. All right, let's see what we get. So it's gotta be called a second of some sort. B flat, C sharp, one, two, three. Okay, so let's go check our seconds. A second is a two, right? Two half steps. And we've got three. So this must be an augmented second. Again, overlaps with a minor third. A minor third is also three half steps. But can I call it that? Absolutely not. Because it's been written as a second. The size first find a way to call it some sort of second. You can never relabel this as a third because the notes are only a line and a space apart. Cool. All right, that's it for that video. I hope that helps. Uh, take some practice to get used to what these accidentals do. So use your pop-up piano for now and eventually, hopefully, you'll get a sense and be able to do these really quickly. It comes, I promise. All right, see you in the next one.